welcome Governor Tim Walz. Thank you. Well, good afternoon to each of you, Steve, and to JCRC. Uh, thank you for your, uh, your moral voice. Thank you for your words and actions um, that call us to be the state that we can be. Uh, Reverend Davis, thank you, and Plymouth Congregational for hosting and being allies in, in, in this ceremony today. Um, I feel incredibly blessed. You got to see, I think you've gotten to know her, uh, my dear friend and, and partner in this work, Lieutenant Governor Flanagan, which is, uh, we get to spend time together, it's fun. To all of the rest of you who took time out of a day to pause today, and those listening at home, thank you. It's a day of solemn remembrance of each and every one of those individuals and families who lost their lives or who were impacted by the events that, that we refer to as the Holocaust. I thank you for that. I also know that today is a day of action, a day of asking who and what will we become, and that who and what will we become all-encompassing as a people, a global people. And I think all of us, as you watch this, and I listened to when Dr. Davis said the film, and by the way, we were talking, the, the world works for, for reasons sometimes that we may not know, but, but it works, I believe, to bending towards that arc of justice. The two of the filmmakers, uh, Lynn Novak and Sarah Bostein, are, are family friends of my wife and ours and the work that they've done. And we've had conversations on a whole spectrum of issues. Um, but in this film, and as Reverend Davis said, for all of you in here, Maybe not much new that you would see in that. And in lies that, lies the most terrifying fact of it. The reason that they did this film, or one of them is, the incredible ignorance around the Holocaust that exists now for so many. Um, and I say that with ignorance of not malice, but all of us knows that empty vessel of ignorance is just waiting to be filled. And those with the false information the deliberate misinformation is where the danger lies. And it is shockingly. It's, it's hard to sometimes look at the statistics. I will applaud all of you, JCRC, and those of their day of action. When you look at all the 50 states and a comprehensive survey was done of Holocaust knowledge, Wisconsin and Minnesota rank at the top of that. Now, many times, as a teacher or a coach, you'd say, all right, we're on the top. Well, a four and four season is not that great. And in this, we rank high, but the lack of knowledge is still great. You witness it on a daily basis. You see it amongst elected officials. Uh, ridiculous comparisons to an event with the Holocaust. The repetition of anti-Semitic tropes and then feigning ignorance about those tropes. Regardless of what your intent might be, the impact is real. And for many, and I think as you try and see the world, that once a problem is solved, you try to move on to another. What's always very difficult to mobilize people around, that we will continue to need to fight this fight and push back on truce, and the situation that led to, more importantly, what led to the ability of and with all of us, as Lieutenant Governor said, we need to look at all of our histories, all of our involvements, and have the courage to know that it's not always going to be very pleasant. And my interaction or passion in the direction I think my life took with this is somewhat by chance. As a young teacher over three decades ago, I applied for something that looked really interesting and it felt like to me was really needed. There was going to be a new museum opening in the United States, the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum. And it had a mission of a transfer of knowledge, if you will, of making sure the stories were told and that they were told correctly. And it was a sea shift under how this was being done. And so you could apply to become a fellow, a Belfort Fellow. 
And they took a teacher from each state and brought them to the Holocaust Museum. And you spent a week with survivors and scholars, like Dr. Erbeling, ding, that you're going to hear from. I was had the opportunity um, to be selected in that. I, it might have been econo or, uh, geographic affirmative action. I was living in Nebraska at the time. And so <laughs> they needed someone, and they took me. Young teacher going there. And I had witnessed, our students knew and could quote that the Holocaust happened, and they could get the dates pretty close, and it was in Germany. But it was really at that point where you saw how superficial things were. It became at that point, evil people did this. And the minute you say it was evil did this, without the concrete actions that led to it and who was involved, you lost them on any real connection to the cause and effect, and most terrifyingly, the ability to be replicated again. And so the scholars at the Holocaust Museum understood that, and I had the privilege to be a part of that and to come back and teach the teachers and, and work with the students. And I can tell you that in the United States and in Minnesota, some progress has been made. There's a shocking lack of focus on making sure that we get this right. And this fight against anti-Semitism, this fight about protecting not just the memories, but the future is going to have to be very aggressive. It's going to have to be fought on the education front. It's going to have to be fought on the legislative front. Frank Hornstein, um, Representative Vaughn, others will be bringing forward hate crimes legislation that we need to have zero tolerance. We need to make sure, again, in this striving to find, you know, we don't want to appear to be too biased on one side or another. It's okay to be biased against anti-Semitism. You don't need to balance it out. You don't need to balance it out. And I think it's important for us to call out anti-Semitism. I don't always buy into this. Both sides do things. But in the case of anti-Semitism, both sides do things. And you get it across the political spectrum in a way that we need to make sure that the education is intersecting with where the laws are, with intersecting with this zero tolerance. And I think today, I'm looking forward to this conversation we're going to have. It heartens me to see all of you here. I do think it's important for us to understand um, we are in some pretty shaky ground around these issues. We're in some pretty shaky ground of a normalization around anti-Semitic um, rhetoric, about totalitarianism in general, and about what is the plan. What is the concrete plan? Not just to say, as Lieutenant Governor pointed out to all of us, never again. What is the plan to ensure that? And so this remembrance the work that JCRC and so many allies do, the work of our allied nations, and to be very clear on this, in a time of such chaos in the world, it's never more important than now to know who your friends are, to know who your allies are, and stand with them unified around the issue of human dignity and the absolute commitment to making sure we stomp this out. So I, for one, am, uh, am grateful and optimistic I am steeled and ready that we are not going to get to have a day where we say this is in the past and we no longer have to think about it. But I am also in the place where we make sure that this is in the deepest recesses of the darkest, most fringe elements of things and it never raises its head, it never gains acceptance, and it never moves in the halls of power or into our lives. That's what our commitment needs to be to make sure. So, Thank you all.